graphical set of guidelines for prioritizing the development of new feature. We need to uh, find some practical way because usually the, the advice prioritized on business value is vogue and mostly useless. So we, uh, we have to think about these guidelines. The first factor, the financial value of having the feature. The second factor, the cost of developing the new feature. <coughs> Third factor, the amount and significant, significance of learning and new knowledge created by developing the feature. And the fourth factor is the amount of risk removed by developing the feature. Starting from the factor number three, the C factor, the overall, the amount and significance of learning and the knowledge, we uh, are, when we uh, think about all the feature, we, uh, when we prioritize the feature, we think about to reduce the uncertainty. In a waterfall environment, at the beginning of the project, we try to reduce the uncertainty about what, about the product. And then we think about the, uh, how we will develop the, uh, the product. But in this way, we create a lot of constraints. In an agile <coughs> environment is a balance of what and how about the product and about the project, how we intend to develop the product. The fourth factor is about risk. Risk is anything that has not yet happened but might and would jeopardize or limit the success of the project. This is in the worst case. For sure, a risk could be even an opportunity, but in the worst case, is something that could limit the success of the, of the project. We could have different kind of risk, schedule risk, cost risk, functionality risk. The important thing is that we have to balance value and the risk when we decide, uh, when we prioritize uh, the activity without our, uh, within our uh, backlog. Definitely activities that have high, uh, high risk and low value are activity that we would like to avoid. There is no sense to provide priorities to that kind of activities. Activities that has high risk uh, but high value are the activities we have to do first at the beginning of the project because at the beginning of the project we have plenty of capability, we have all our budget. So it is important to <coughs> utilize all our capabilities to reduce, to try to reduce the risk. Then the, uh, then the second uh, activity to, to do are the activities with uh, have low risk but high value. And then for last activities are low risk and low value. I have uh, postponed, I started from the factors C and D and the high uh, left at the end, A, B, B, because the talk, the two-day talk, uh, will be focused on the first two uh, factors. The first two factors, that is the uh, financial value and the developmental cost, are predominant because most projects are undertaken to either save or make money. Uh, we are in a, a global market environment. It is really important to maintain 
in terms of in terms of business to maintain cost uh, low. So we have uh, <coughs> to uh, think about the value of all the activity the activities we have to perform. If we can estimate the amount of money that will be made or saved by each thing, we can use that to help prioritize. We are speaking about a <coughs> okay, thing because uh, sometimes it's difficult to find the value of a single user story, so we could aggregate different user stories to create uh, to create thing. In what way we could uh, evaluate the uh, amount, the financial, uh, the amount of money of each thing? We could have a, a meeting with uh, um, the people uh, involved, and we could uh, uh, filling it this table, this kind of table, in which we have. On the row, we have this is two here for the project divided in quarters, and in the column we have we have all kind of revenue of returns we could have uh, from our uh, thing. The numbers come from some market research used in the business case that initiated the project or at the minimum whoever is requesting the thing should be able to quantify the reasons for developing it. The column <coughs> are all kind of returns. So uh, this is uh, not a standard table. This is depending on the project, both in for uh, time frame and even for kind of uh, revenue we will, uh, we will have. It is quite general. New revenue, it is the uh, revenue coming from new customer. Uh, usually uh, companies uh, want to enlarge their market share. So uh, the target is always to find new customer. And so for this reason, the new revenue is the most common contributors to the return on the project. Then we have incremental revenue. It is additional incremental revenue coming from existing customer. Customer that already uh, bought uh, our our uh, product. The incremental revenue can result because the new product could have uh, could encourage existing customers to purchase more licenses, could include optional add-on modules that can be sold separately, could include features that allow charging a higher price. The third kind of return we could have is the retained revenue. It refers to the revenue an organization will lose if the project is not performed. We, uh, one of the uh, main problems uh, with our products is the obsolescence. If we not uh, <coughs> improve our product uh, soon will become uh, too old and so we will lose a lot of customer. We have to uh, take in consideration when we um, want, uh, when we decide if we go with a new feature or not we have, we have to take in consideration um, the um, revenue, an organization will lose if the project, if the thing is not performed. Then the last one is the operational efficiency. 
there's always some uh, tasks that could be eliminated to uh, make the organization more efficient. Even if you're working on commercial software that is sold to other outside your company, some task within your project may still contribute to improving operational uh, efficiencies. Uh, for example, better integration or communication between departments, uh, reduce employees turnover, shorter training uh, time for new employees, any time-sensitive process, anything that improves accuracy or reduce error. That is, a lot. Uh, uh, we could learn a lot of things by something, by a product, a, a, a things we uh, develop. And this could uh, represent a value for us. Okay, uh, uh, I can understand that this uh, could be not so clear. So I would like to present an example in order to let you see uh, that it is not so uh, difficult to find the value and of a film and is not so difficult to compare in terms of value uh, different uh, different things. So the example is that we have a mm, uh, we provide we have a comp we are a company uh, that uh, we provide a financial web service. Our company offers some web-based financial services to company, companies too small to have their own financial office. Currently, customer, customers need to enter information on our website at least three days before they need official financial documentation. We would like to improve the system with a, a new uh, with a new feature. Our goal is to improve turnaround time to be able to offer next day service. Now we want to uh, calculate if this is a valuable feature or not. If we um, could spend time to have this feature or it will be better to go on the, a different direction. Assume that we already estimate the, uh, the stories in this thing. 150 story points. At the team's historical velocity of 20 story points per two weeks, iteration, developing the team will take 7.5 iteration. We can say 8 iteration. This means uh, 8 iteration, this means uh, si uh, 16, 16 weeks. Then, now, <coughs> we could start filling the, uh, the table. So, the first column is the new revenue. Since now in the meeting we will have all the uh, people involved in this calculation. Uh, we will have the sales person and since one third of the customer rejected the financial web service because of our three days requirement, we assume that we can attract 50 new customers per quarter this year and then 100 customers per quarter next year. So we will assume, with the help of the sales person, uh, that uh, the amount of new, or uh, the amount of new customer. Moreover, even even though the new feature won't be available until the middle of the second quarter, we believe we can still sign up 50 new customer in that quarter. Now we have 
uh, estimated the number of customers, we are going to estimate the revenue from that customer, the new revenue from that customer. The average website service uh, customer pays us 400, could be pound, dollar, euro, as you want, per year in fee. We think that the overnight uh, delivery will be most appealing to smaller customers that have pay an average of 200 pound per year. So we think that uh, the new feature could <coughs> make us earn at least 50% of this 200. So we could make another one, um, 100 pound per year from each of those customers. So in total we will have 200 plus 100, so 300 per year. But since we have the table divided per quarter, we divided per quarter 300, and so we will have 75 per quarter. So, new customer, new customer, and the revenue for each new customer. This, this value is lower because we uh, have not uh, the product uh, completed at the end of the first quarter, at the beginning of the second quarter. And so we have the column filling, filled in. Then, second column, incremental revenue. Incremental revenue, based on what we know of our customer, how often they are late submitting financial information, we estimate that we will sign up about 100 customers per quarter until 400 of our customers are using the overnight service. So we believe, we think that uh, our existing customer could uh, appreciate, could um, uh, uh, want these new this new feature, and so consider, and so we estimated the number of these existing customer that will pay more for having this new feature. Considering what we have, I have already said that we we will have 100 per year. We will make that those customers pay 100 more per year. So we will have, these are the existing customer that will require the new feature and this is 100 divided per quarters and this is the incremental revenue from existing customer, customers. Retained, retained revenue. Retained revenue <coughs> is what we will no longer lose because customers are dissatisfied with our products, deciding to switch away from another web service. It is difficult to have metric, uh, but we could estimate to prevent the loss of 20 customers per quarter in the first year, and then 40 customers per quarter in the second year. Our current customer is worth 400 pound per year, that is 100 per quarter. And so we will have, this is the customer we are going not to lose. <coughs> and the t these are the revenue, and this is the retained revenue. Last column is calculating uh, the, the operational uh, efficiencies that could be, uh, could be critical, but uh, I, we have made a, a sim simple example. Currently, the system relies on a clerk to manually verify the correctness of the financial information and to manually submit it through a couple of workflow steps. We have two clerks today and we will have two more. We are thinking about to hire 
two more clerks in the middle of this year and other two more in the middle of the next year. For the overnight project, since we are improving the uh, capability of the, of the software <coughs> of the system, uh, we will need to almost completely eliminate the human intervention. So we expect it to be able to eliminate uh, one of the clerks each year. This means if the clerk's salary is about 20,000 uh, pounds per year, plus another, plus another 50% of benefit, we have that a clerk uh, is a cost for us of 30,000 uh, pounds per year, that this is the fully burdened level cost. So if we will uh, uh, reduce the number of the clerk, we will not spend this, this money. So we will have this kind of retard, the operational efficiency retard. Then we have all the table filling out, <coughs> filling in. Now we have the second factor, that is the cost, the development uh, cost to have uh, all uh, the two the in and out of money. To complete the investment profile, we need to estimate the uh, expected development cost of the thing. The adjusted cost per iteration shows the cost the project of each individual based on the burdened labor cost and the amount of time spent on the project. So if we divided the fully burdened labor cost per uh, 26 uh, that are the number of iteration uh, per year, we will have the burdened labor cost per iteration. We have to consider the time spent uh, on the project and then we will have the adjusted cost per iteration. Then we could even divide this value if we have the cost per iteration and the date iteration is uh, uh, a two weeks iteration. We divided this amount of, mm, of money per two, we could have the cost per week. Considering that in a week, we have 10 for, uh, the velocity of 10 story point, we could have even the cost of story point. And this could help even when we have to uh, calculate the cost of some other, some other uh, things. <coughs> together we have development cost with this minus minus the revenue and this is the net cash flow that is I will sum all the row and I will have the net cash flow that I uh, produce by the new future But this information, <coughs> unfortunately, are not enough because it cannot provide me a clear picture. Can we can, I cannot uh, compare this number uh, for different things. We need the help of some financial measurement. One of the uh, easiest way to um, utilize uh, is the utilization of the uh, financial tool called net present value. The net present value is defined as the sum of the present values of incoming and outgoing cash flows over a period of time. So 
we have the period of time, in this case two years, incoming, outgoing. Net present value is a measure of how much money a project or a thing, in this case, can be expected to return in today present value. This is important because uh, we expect to have, uh, in this case, we have a, a two-year thing. Uh, we could have six-month thing and so on. We could, uh, we should have the possibility to have a, a, the amount of money no more uh, linked to the period, but um, linked just to today value. And for this reason, we uh, we utilize the present value. Present value is the amount we have to invest today in order to have a known amount in the future. To determine the value today of a future amount of money, we think in terms of how much money we have to put in the bank today in order for it to grow to the future amount. The easiest example is to have an amount of 100 pounds in one year and Assuming an interest rate of 10%, today that amount of money for me is 91 pounds because I have to put in the bank 91 pounds today to have 100 pounds in, <coughs> in one year. So we have the net cash flow that I utilize from the previous table, the factors, 12% per year. This is, this is something that a company should know. Uh, is an historical uh, interest rate. It's important to, for a company to know or at least to get that, uh, to have this, uh, this value. Because if this value is really uh, low, Probably we, it's better to put to invest our money and put them in a bank than invest in, in the project. And we will have the present value. But the present, uh, even the using the net present value to compare and prioritize things at the advantage <coughs> of being easy to calculate and easy to understand because it provides me the amount of money I will have from the new feature. The primary dis disadvantage is to NPV is that comparing the values of two different cash flow streams can be misleading because uh, it uh, the amount of money I will have is depending even on the amount of money I have to invest. We will see in a table, in a further, further table, how I am saying. So sometimes we utilize the internal rate of return that provides a way of expressing the return on, the, on uh, a project in a percentage term that could, mm, could be easily uh, comparable with our um, with our with other value. Internal rate of return is a measure of how quickly the money invested in a project will increase in the value. So it's no more linked to the amount of money, but how quickly that those money are will increase in in value. Okay, this is the formula. Uh, interest rate of defined is defined as the interest rate at which the net present value of the cash flow stream is equal to zero to zero. So the interest rate in which we could have back our money invested. 
that's the table. So, for example, we have two projects, project A and project B. First, here, I invest 200,000 pounds in project A and 100,000 pounds in project B. And you can see the amount of money, the net present value of project A is definitely higher than the one in the project B. Because you see, 50,000, 50,000, 75,000, 75, but here is the double the value. The here is much more than double the value. So somebody could think about that the project A could be better to uh, complete than the project B. But if we consider the internal rate of return, we will see that the percentage of the project B is bigger. Why? Because we utilize an investment of the project A that is twice the investment of the project B. So thinking about the just the net present value could be really misleading. Then we have the, the third and the last uh, financial tool we could utilize is the payback period. Uh, this is an additional way of looking at the cash flow stream. Is the amount of time required to earn back the initial investment. It measures the amount and duration of financial risk taken on by the organization. The larger the payback period, the riskier the project, because anything could change during that period. This, so this is uh, very important, especially for the small companies that have no, uh, no money. Uh, they, they have projects uh, with really short payback period because a longer payback period is, uh, is something too risky for a small company. Everything could happen during the period when you are in the negative uh, side of the cash flow. So we have in this in our example, we have we start with this investment, then we sum this other uh, investment. We uh, from the third quarter we uh, start to earn money, uh, and so our uh, negative flow uh, is reduced, and we have the break-even point in the seventh quarter when we go on the on the uh, top uh, quadrant, on the upper quadrant of the cash flow. <coughs> so we come back in the positive uh, cash flow. So the payback period here is six quarter. Now we have all the uh, information to compare the return, to decide if the uh, things is better to uh, perform now or to wait for other things more valuable. The result of valuing multiple things can be presented in a, a table and lets an organization quickly and effectively review its options and choose to work on the highest value team things. The product owner and team will need to consider a variety of situations, specific factors such as the organization tolerance for risk, as I said, uh, the tolerance of small uh, for risk for small company are really uh, low. Need for short payback period, availability of uh, resource, uh, resources, other option for. Uh, investment uh, money and so on. So we will have this final table and we will have number of story points, 
cost, net present value, return on investment, that is another way to, to say internal rate of return, discount, discounted because even the payback period we have to provide to the actual uh, value. Seven quarters, six quarters, three quarters. So in this way, we have the full picture to and the, uh, all the information to compare different things. So we could decide too that for us it's really important because we are a, a small company. It's really important to have a small payback period. So we could provide this priority number one to this theme, priority number two and priority number number three. It's according to <coughs> our uh, company, to our uh, st company uh, strategies, uh, uh, the market situation and, uh, and so on. But in this way I know that if I have to uh, scrap a, a feature and activities because I have no time, I will delete the things that have the uh, menu <coughs> value, the lower value for me. So I'm sure uh, in, in this way. Okay. Thank you.